welcome to read aloud. I can't wait today because we're going to start a new type of text all year long and read aloud with your teachers. You've been reading fictional text and we know that fictional texts are made up. Go ahead and think about what your favorite fictional text is that we've read this year. I know one of the first books that we read together was The Night Before First Grade. That was way back in August when we started school. Now we get to start reading informational text. I am excitement. We get to start reading informational texts which tell us real information and real facts that we can use to figure out different things and learn from. One thing that we're gonna focus on today about the informational text is illustrations. Illustrations are pictures that an illustrator draws or paints. We're also gonna to get to see pictures which are real photos that someone takes with a camera. The text today is called Spiders. It's by Gail Gibbons. And as we read, our job is to think about Gail Gibbons. We're gonna think about this author because we wanna figure out the author's purpose. We wanna figure out the author's purpose. Let's go ahead and figure out what does that mean? What is the author's purpose? The author's purpose is the reason why an author writes something. It's the reason why an author writes something. How can we figure out the author's purpose? We can ask, hmm, what does the author want us to know, think, and feel? What does the author want us to know, think, and feel? Why are we going to do this? Well, to figure out if the author is trying to persuade us, to inform us, or if they're just trying to entertain us. So we get to figure out the author's purpose today. When the video is over, you're going to respond to tell me what the author's purpose was for writing this text, Spiders. Remember, the author's name is Gail Gibbons. Go ahead and look at the cover of the text. What are you wondering about and what are you noticing? Go ahead and get started. Spiders may look scary, but most of them don't hurt people. There are about 30,000 different kind of spiders. So in the text I see that it says spiders may look scary, but most of them don't hurt people. So I'm gonna stop and think about what the author's purpose might be. Hmm, what does the author want us to know, think, and feel as we read? Well, the author says spiders don't hurt people, so I'm thinking she doesn't want us to be afraid. The author wants us to know that we don't have to be afraid of spiders, and I think she's going to start teaching us more about spiders. We're going to keep reading to see. I'm so surprised that there are 30,000 different kind of spiders, and I wonder what makes them different. Hopefully we're gonna find more about spiders out in this book. Spiders come in many shapes and sizes. Some are so tiny that they're no bigger than a speck of dust. Others can be as big as a dinner plate. Strike a pose if that makes you kind of scared. Definitely makes me kind of nervous that I can see a spider that big. But this author is trying to teach me that I don't have to be afraid of spiders. So I'm going to try my best next time when I see one to not be scared. Most spiders are brown, gray, or black. And some have really bright colors. So I told you I was wondering what made spiders different. And the author has just told me some ways that spiders are different. They're different colors and different sizes. Hmm. What do you notice that we see on this page? There's a feature about informational text that we notice. Yeah, you're right. We see an illustration. We know that the illustration is showing us what different types of spiders could look like, their colors, or what size they are. Remember, an illustration is just a drawing or a painting that someone does, not a real photo. The first spiders lived about three million years ago even before dinosaurs roamed the earth. Spiders belong to a group of animals called arachnids. The word arachnid comes from an old Greek legend. Once there was a woman named Arachne who was angry when she lost a weaving contest against the goddess Athena. When Arachne died, Athena turned Arachne's body into a spider so that she could weave 
forever. Mm. So this illustration has lots of labels with a ton of interesting, interesting information on it. At the top, you can see the heading. It says a spider's body. So what do you think this illustration is showing? Yeah, it's showing you the spider's body. I'm going to point and show you some of the different parts. It says that a spider's body has two parts, the abdomen and the coelophorax. So that means head, chest. Hmm. And now on this side, the heading says an insect's body. I wonder if the author is trying to show us that these are similar or different. When I'm reading, try to figure out if the spider's body is similar or different to an insect's body. So most insects have two big eyes and often three smaller eyes between them. An insect's body has three parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Hmm. Do you think these bodies are similar? Thumbs up or thumbs down? I agree with you if you're showing a thumbs down because the spider only has two body parts. The insects have three. Spiders are not insects. Their bodies are different from insects in many ways. We just found that out by looking at the labels and knowing that spiders have two parts and an insect has three. A male spider is smaller than a female spider. When a male spider finds a mate, he must be careful. If the female spider is hungry, she might eat him. Some male spiders do a dance or bring an insect to attract the female. Hmm. So now what are you wondering about spiders? We've started to get a little bit more information. You know that the male spider is normally smaller than a female. What is something that you're wondering about? You can go ahead and pause the video to tell someone around you what you're wondering about now about spiders. Great. So a mother spider lays her eggs and encloses them in strong silk egg sacs. Some spiders lay a few eggs and others lay thousands. After a number of weeks, the baby spiders creep out of the silk sack. Spider babies are called spiderlings. Most spider mothers don't stay with their babies. Some spiderlings care for themselves as soon as they are born. They run up to the highest places they can find. The spiderlings spin out long streamers of silk. A breeze lifts them and carries them to their new homes. This way of traveling is called ballooning. As a spiderling grows, it's hard outer skin called an exoskeleton. It's called an, yes, exoskeleton. It becomes tight and the skin starts to crack and open along its back. The spider sheds it by climbing out and this is called molting. This is called molting. Good. Most spiders molt five to ten times. Hmm. So I'm thinking about why does the author show us these illustrations and give us this information? Why do you think the author shows us these illustrations and gives us this kind of information? And what have you learned so far? I know that I've learned that male spiders are smaller than female spiders, but what's something that you have learned so far from our informational text? Some spiders are web weavers. They spin webs to catch their food. There are spiders that weave tangled webs. The spider spins a tangled mass of silk. And when an insect is trapped, the spider runs out to get it. That's called a house spider. I can tell from the label on the illustration. I'll show you the picture of the house spider. This is a cardinal spider. Other spiders weave sheet webs. The spider hangs upside down beneath the web. And when an insect hits the sheet web, the spider quickly pulls it through the webbing. So we've got more information about how spiders can be different. Remember, I was wondering, well, how can they be different? One way is the way that they make webs or use their webs to catch their food. Spiders can create funnel webs too. This is a picture of a grass spider. You can see their funnel web there. The top is big and the bottom is small. The web is held in place by lines of silk. The spider sits at the bottom and waits 
for an insect to fly or walk in. Some spiders spin triangle webs. A triangle web is fastened at three points. We know that another word for points on a triangle is vertices. I hope that you got that right because I know we spent a lot of time practicing and using that word vertices. The web's hand bands, excuse me, the web's bands of dry and silk, silk traps inside. This is called a triangle spider. Wow, the orb weaving spider spins a pattern of many circles. The most beautiful spider web of all is the orb web. Hmm. Think about what the author is showing us in these illustrations. Looking at these pages, what does the author show us in these illustrations? I know that the author is showing us how this spider, it's a garden spider, makes an orb web. It goes through and shows me each of the steps that the spider takes. Not all spiders use webs for catching food. Some hide in burrows or beneath rocks and stones. When the spider sees an insect, it quickly runs out and grabs it. This is called a wolf spider. And over here we have a water spider. One unusual kind of spider lives under water. It weaves a bell-shaped web and then it fills the web with tiny bubbles. The spider stays there, breathing in the air from the bubbles and waits to catch water insects. That's something new that I just learned too. I did not know that there was such thing as a water spider. Another type of spider digs a tunnel and lines it with silk to protect itself. It makes a hinged trap door for, from dirt and silk to cover up the tunnel. When the spider is hungry, it opens the door just a little bit. If an insect comes close, the spider scurries out to catch it. This is called a trap door spider. I've noticed that a lot of spiders have to be really fast to catch their food. Okay, over here we have a picture of a crab spider. Can you tell where the crab spider is? I think he's doing a pretty good job of camouflaging. Some spiders hide on or inside flat flowers. The spider even changes color from yellow to white to match the color of the flower. And when an insect lands, the spider snatches it. Hmm. So what else have we learned so far from this text? We've been taught a ton of information by our author. What's one new thing that you have learned? Go ahead and pause and talk to someone around you and share what's one new thing that you have learned. Some spiders are dangerous. One of them is the black widow spider. Give me a me too if you've ever heard of a black widow spider. The black widow spider bites only when its web is disturbed or it is in danger. The poison of a black widow spider can kill a person. But the biggest spider of all is the tarantula. Remember our author doesn't want us to be afraid. When its legs are stretched out, it can measure about 10 inches wide. That might be bigger than some of your feet. It is very hairy. Tarantulas that live in the United States are not poisonous to people. Spiders have enemies. Some insects, like spider wasps, hunt and eat spiders. Toads, frogs, and some birds like to eat spiders too. Most spiders live for about one year. Some live much longer. Female tarantulas sometimes live to be 25 years old. Many people don't like spiders because they're afraid of them. But spiders help us. They play an important role by eating many insects that are harmful to crops and people. Maybe I should stop being afraid of spiders. I keep saying that, but it's kind of hard to change the way that I've been feeling for a long time. 
spiders can be interesting to watch. Scientists are still discovering new kinds of spiders and learning more about them. Hmm, why do you think the author is giving us this information on these pages? Think, what does the author want us to know, think, and feel as we read? Hmm. Well, I think they want us to think that spiders are helpful. We don't have to be scared of them. They actually help us do things and protect some of our plants and crops and even people. Mm. That's the end of our story. So now, remember I told you at the beginning, your job is to figure out and answer this question. What is the author's purpose for writing this text? Remember, the author's name is Gail Gibbons. She writes the text, Spiders. Let's quickly review how we find the author's purpose. We know the author's purpose is the reason why the author writes something. The author's purpose is? Good, the reason why an author writes something. We can find it by asking, what does the author want us to know, think, and feel? Why do we do this? Well, we want to figure out what's the author trying to do? Persuade us, inform us, or entertain us. I can't wait to see what you guys think. Why did the author write this text? 